uh, it's a great pleasure to to have this uh, workshop uh, with you. Um, my name is Magdalena Kirsten Bartczak, and uh, we are spending today uh, two hours. Uh, uh, at least, uh, more or less, maybe like that. I will not. Uh, uh, I will not go more than uh, you have in your uh, agenda. So uh, uh, I will present my uh, presentation. Maybe it will be much easier. Today we are talking about HIV, hepatitis C, and TB combination prevention in Europe for community healthcare workers and peer work. Um, for those who don't know me, uh, I'm Magda from Warsaw uh, in Poland. I'm a PhD of Sociology, Master of Faculty of Education, and also Sexual Educator. Uh, I'm working as a CEO in Foundation almost 20 years, and uh, um, I'm also an EATG member. Foundation is part of AIDS Action Europe, of uh, Civil Society Forum for HIV, HEP and TB. Uh, I'm also a um, member of International Aid Society, European Aid Society, and Polish Expert Group and Society. I'm working with EU PATI, co uh, cooperate with ECDC and also University of Copenhagen. And uh, I'm this year uh, co-chair of European Testing Week. So everything what I will be talking today from one part is based, of course, of knowledge and science. Uh, for other side, I would like to share with you also an experience from a community-based organization that I'm uh, chairing also. So, so I hope it will be interesting and I hope also that it will be uh, interactive for you. Uh, the foundation and part of my work, it's uh, different because we have from one side HIV and other STDs, uh, and we are working on uh, prevention, education, diagnosis, and uh, also preparing a social campaign. We are uh, working around harm reduction, and we also support people linked with HIV and also people linked with hepatitis C, people who are using drugs. Uh, so this is a very broad topic that we are working in, and I would like to share with you some part of our work today. So uh, because it's the webinar and it's online, and I know because I also use a lot of this kind of uh, uh, webinars and Zoom calls. Um, so just to uh, have a good time with you, uh, please uh, mute your microphone. But I would like to also you to share your knowledge and experience too, because you are a participant that are also, uh, I hope uh, you will be active member of this meeting. Um, you can switch off or switch on the camera, but I hope uh, we will have few times to see each other uh, during this uh, two hours. Um, of course, there will be space for a Q and A, but also I prepare some interactive uh, uh, part. Uh, I hope it works because, uh, uh, and I hope that it will be no technical issue around it. Uh, be engaged as much as possible uh, to spend good time together. Be respectful. Um, stay on topic, and uh, because topic is brought, I will also try to uh, keep uh, time and um, um, control how, how it's uh, going. And as you know, the, uh, the webinar is recording. And um, yeah, I hope everything goes well. And uh, the session is, uh, about, uh, as uh, was mentioned, uh, as part of the core project. And today we'll be more focused about combination prevention. This is what I'm doing 20 years. Uh, of course, including uh, HIV, hepatitis C, TB, and STIs, uh, because we cannot forget about it. Uh, we will talking about crucial roles of community health workers and peer workers. And I, I know from the list that there are some people who have also a huge experience in this group. So I hope you support and also uh, uh, exchange your knowledge here uh, with us. So we will have uh, five parts of this uh, meeting, more or less uh, I prepare for half an hour for each uh, part. So first part of uh, half part will be third, uh, information about combination prevention. 
uh, and uh, medical. And the second part will be uh, about HIV, hepatitis, and TB all from medical and non-medical perspective. And uh, for a third part, we will try to exchange uh, like of experience. Of, um, and I hope you will be involved. And uh, Q and A question and any other business. It will be the third part, the, the last part of the uh, workshop. And uh, because it's a workshop and it's also always a challenge how to do a workshop online, not face to face. I much more prefer face to face meeting, but everybody knows uh, that that it started to be a part of our life work, uh, the, the webinar and Zooms. So uh, I would like to be in contact with you and also see your thoughts and uh, your opinion. So I would like to use uh, Mentimeter. It's the application. So if you have your phone next to you, please take it because we will need it. Not for, of course, phones, but we, uh, to answer for the question. And uh, you will see the several topics. So you have to uh, scan this QR code and put the code on the number that you see on the uh, down on this page, 8942-8628. Uh, and there will be several uh, questions during the this webinar uh, because I would like to um, see what you are thinking and also uh, organize this meeting as much interactive as is possible so sorry you will not, you can, will you have to be here with us you cannot uh, check your emails you have 2 hours uh, with combination prevention and the topic uh, and uh, this webinar because there will be several different activity that you I will, um, invite you to uh, be engaged so uh so this is right now let's check uh how, uh, how it works and how many participants are on uh, online. So now you have uh, uh, the question, how are you feeling? Oh, somebody's sick, sorry for that. Good, relaxed, great. I see four responses, six respond, great. Um, Perspectful, great, relaxed. Okay, let's uh, wait for others. I'm happy because it works. This is the it was the 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 the, the uh, most stressful part that I was worried that it wasn't work. <laughs> excited? Oh, great! <laughs> I'm too excited. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I see also that other people uh, joining the meeting. So please uh, scan your Q, uh, this QR code, and uh, the the um, uh, code number is on the top of the page uh, and it will be repeated on every time. So, uh, okay, thank you very much for those who respond for this question. So this is another uh, part. So let's see for which country we came from. So now you can also answer the second uh, question uh, on the phone. Okay, and it's more and more answers. So it's great that it works well. <laughs> I see more than one person from Germany because the letters are bigger. Okay, so it's great to uh, see you all. So uh, the the next question, and uh, then I will be answer. Uh, there will be more working for me, but uh, uh, I'm happy that you are so involved. So please answer for the question uh, for which group you belong, or you think you belong, or. Okay, so this is the moment because we don't have so many people. So for those who are uh, who would like to, can you uh, say uh, what are you doing uh, in your uh, work life? If you can, you can put on the chat or you can also um, say by microphone. I I hope it will be going like that. Uh, right now we go for the part uh, one. I try to be short on this and not too boring, uh, but especially for those who are uh, working on the different part, it's the another question from Menti. So who do, for those who are just enjoying, 
uh, uh, come to the meeting, uh, we using Menti questionnaire. And uh, if you uh, you have a QR code and a number of code on the um, top of the slide. So, uh, do you know what is combination prevention? Please answer the question on the Menti. Great. I'm happy that uh, you are first of all answering and for the question. Okay, so we have some people who are not sure, one person uh, who uh, uh, doesn't know. Uh, so I'm happy to be here with you to share this knowledge. So this is the, the next question about, can you put three words uh, uh, what you have in your mind when you hear combination prevention. Mm, that's great because we have 21 responses and uh, and different answer. Thank you for that. So uh, yeah, let's go for uh, clarification. What is combination prevention and uh, how we uh, explain it? Uh, I have the um, there, of course, used to uh, and work around its uh, UNAIDS combination prevention as rights, evidence, and community based programs that promote a combination of biomedical, behavioral, and structural intervention designed to meet the HIV prevention needs of specific people and communities. Of course, I will be talking today not only HIV uh, prevention, but also hepatitis C, TB. But uh, also, when we are talking about combination prevention, we have to remember that. Uh, only one uh, working around one disease, it's not enough. And I will also explain it during today uh, why uh, um, why I say like that and uh, why it's so important also to not work only on the one uh, disease and comparing for other one also. So WHO um, also as a combination prevention program include biomedical, uh, structural, and behavioral uh, activities, and different intervention, and different methods. Uh, because as you we know, especially for those who are working on, on PrEP, we know that when the PrEP was in, um, initiated for HIV uh, prevention, uh, it works very well, but very, very quickly other STIs go up. So it was also the that the topic that we have to think uh, more um, uh, broad ab about uh, prevention. And um, when we include, for as I mentioned, HIV prevention, we, then we cannot for for forget about other STIs like it was around uh, PrEP. So in the biomedical uh, intervention, we, we see still condoms, of course, testing uh, antiretroviral treatment because uh, treatment is uh, prevention, uh, vertical transmission prevention, PrEP and PEP, voluntary uh, and uh, needle uh, and, and surgeon programs. Of course, uh, we have to include it on the structural because we know, as a, especially from NGO perspective, that action is not enough. We should have also the law to protect rights, uh, inter intervention to reduce stigma and discrimination, gender and, and gender vi violence approach. And in the, the, the third part uh, on the combination prevention programs, we, we involve intervention to promote counseling on risk reduction, uh, comprehensive uh, sexual education, peer education programs and uh, social marketing campaigns. So here you can see different uh, options of the package of health service for HIV uh, prevention, but as I mentioned, it's not only dedicated for HIV. And uh, this was uh, the, the report from 2016. Uh, we don't have time, and I saw also from the previous webinar for those who attend, uh, I'm pretty sure that most of you have a basic knowledge about HIV, hepatitis C and B and uh, TB, so I will not... Um, spend time for uh, discuss directly about each of this uh, disease but just to show you uh, the the eu report uh, it was published in 2017 and 2018 the data uh, how the situation of each of the uh, disease uh, looks like 
On the left side, you have the uh, TB, uh, then you have HIV, then you have hepatitis C, and the last one is uh, hepatitis uh, B. And there is a huge difference between country to country. And of course, uh, I will mention also about the quite new situation for Europe and about the situation uh, in Ukraine, uh, who also has a huge impact for European situation and also migration from Eastern uh, uh, Asia and Central Asia will probably have huge impact also from the, the situation in uh, West Europe. So there are several uh, nice documents that if you would like to work on it, I will uh, also put the, uh, the name of this document. Uh, this is the WHO um, document uh, who consolidate uh, guidelines on HIV, viral hepatitis, and STI prevention, diagnosis, treatment, and care for the, the, the key population. So as you can see on this slide, um, there are several different uh, factors contributing to HIV, STI, and uh, viral hepatitis in the key uh, population. So again, there is uh, social factors, uh, there are bio biological factors, uh, but also what is mentioned all the time, that uh, stigma, criminalization, uh, violence, gender, race, everything is uh, it's in the package. We cannot work directly on the one part because we will, if we were working on the one part, we forget about other and it doesn't work um, in the long time uh, working. So this is also what was mentioned on this uh, report. And it was the, the way that WHO uh, thinking to, to, to work on it, uh, to develop new recommendations through quality as a, uh, assessment of evidence, uh, to consolidate the most recent guide, have dedicated guidelines for HIV, we have dedicated uh, uh, for hepatitis, for STI, in some countries working also for uh, TB, in some countries doesn't work uh, because uh, uh, some government forget that TB is still exist and uh, it still uh, can be a problem that we should work and face on it. So this is the, again, um, the, the different uh, idea how to stop and uh, the time it's 2030 uh, to um, have, for example, end AIDS, STI and uh, hepatitis as public uh, uh, treats uh, by, uh, by uh, 2030 and uh, end of discrimination. But every time when I hear and uh, see the documents, I'm asking what is the real uh, long-term strategy, what kind of fundings and uh, programs are really implemented to change the situation uh, because documents are not enough. So uh, coming back from the combination prevention program, uh, we have to remember that it's also um, put on the UNAIDS uh, uh, definition that it should be tolerated to national and the local needs uh, based on the epidemiological information, concentrate resource on combination activities where they are most needed, Structural intervention make uh, it possible to create an um, environment for the syn synergic preventive uh, action and be also affected communities should be fully involved in this program. So that's also the reason why we are work talking about healthcare workers and peer workers that should be and must be included on the systematic combination prevention uh, programs. As you know, everybody heard about 1990. Uh, it was UNA target uh, for 2020, and they, of course, uh, the uh, this free 1990 forget about prevention. And uh, when we include prevention, it's much broader uh, topic, and we uh, uh, we see how many different uh, op uh, possibilities we have, and then we have 95. Uh, uh, 95, 95, 95, and this is how it explained by UNAIDS.
So probably uh, very soon on the International AIDS Conference, who will, uh, which will happen in Munich, uh, uh, there will be a huge discussion about how the implementation looks like of this strategy uh, from the individual perspective of the country, but also from the different perspective from the NGOs and uh, um, key population. But this is what was the, the main change from my perspective from 1990 to 95, 95, 95, uh, that they implement use 95% uh, use combination prevention. And also what was mentioned before uh, as an ad, as a first uh, 90s, uh, stigma and discrimination and also quality of life of people living with HIV. It's the same important. It's not enough to have uh, viral suppression, but you have to also have the the good quality uh, of life and other uh, points are implemented. And I uh, hope that uh, this kind of uh, strategy again, uh, will have a real impact, uh, not only a uh, nice paper. So as I mentioned, HIV, it's also, uh, we cannot uh, talk separately about uh, combination prevention for HIV. Uh, we have to remember about also other, it's part of other STIs. And of course, we, we know that uh, other STIs uh, can be cured, but it doesn't mean that if somebody is cured, uh, will not get again. So uh, even uh, when it's uh, we know that it's treatment, it's, it's not enough if people will not change behavior. And uh, we have to, uh, again, use combination prevention if we really want to uh, stop the, the newly uh, uh, people with uh, newly uh, diagnosis. So as I mentioned, it was biomedical intervention, behavioral intervention and structural intervention uh, are important to have effectively uh, HIV uh, prevention. And uh, there are several um, option how you can do that and it's of course again we have to remember about cultural uh, barriers uh, when and how to implement it uh, and we cannot forget about uh, individual country uh, situation but we have also very hard very fast going uh, research about HIV prevention uh, around medical different uh, products. Uh, so uh, in some country already we have long-acting injectables. Uh, we are implementing in some country also uh, long-acting PrEP. And uh, we know what is going on around vaccines and it's uh, it's still a long way and uh, to implement it. But, but the work is in progress. So uh, from different perspective, uh, people try to uh, implement uh, different uh, option for the combination uh, prevention. So this is uh, also what I mentioned about uh, strategy, not only for HIV, but also for hepatitis C. So hepatitis C combination prevention, pre prevention uh, including high coverage of needle and surgeon programs, opioid against uh, therapy, chronic hepatitis C treatment, addressing underlying barriers to service access and uh, can dramatically reduce uh, incident toward elimination of hepatitis C. And of course, we have right now very good treatment for hepatitis C, but still like in other STI, also we have to remember that uh, cure, it's not enough. Uh, we have to uh, educate people, work with them and uh, talk how to not uh, get uh, hepatitis C again. And for uh, tuberculosis prevention, it's also different strategy. Uh, of course, it's a, a different uh, disease, so it's also a different uh, way of transmission. And uh, so, uh, but still, uh, we cannot talk uh, separately about uh, TB uh, because we know that also people living with HIV have higher, higher risk and possibility to uh, to have also TB. So, but we have, in many countries we have a, a vaccination. But again, uh, it's also the discussion about access for vaccination and uh, willingness to do vaccination. And uh, there is also prevent uh, preventive treatment and transmission control and uh, burden of infection and also it's very dynamic um, 
work around TB uh, and also guidelines are changing right now. So you don't have to stay two years at hospital to have good treatment for TB. There is a lot of action to do ambulatory treatment and protect people and not staying at hotel, at uh, hospital uh, one or two years. So again, um, as I mentioned, we cannot talk uh, separately about um, different individual disease. So as you can see also WHO policy on co collaborative TB and HIV activities. Uh, so there are several different guidelines and national programs and uh, other uh, stakeholders and recommendation how to uh, work together and how to implement this recommendation uh, together. So there's again uh, different uh, prevention measures uh, and we cannot stop, um, mm, we cannot forget about also uh, TB uh, because this topic, uh, from my perspective, from Polish perspective, we have really big number of uh, uh, new cases of uh, TB and uh, our system right now doesn't work and it will be reconstruction of uh, the system because we have more and more patients and uh, our uh, medical staff are not prepared for that. So it was the part one. Do you have any question, comments? Um, this is also the, the moment we can stop the recording. Uh, so uh, it was uh, there was no comment, but I have another uh, question to you. To, so please take your phone. And uh, I would like to ask you, uh, what do you think? What action uh, uh, is needed to be taken around HIV, hepatitis C and TB combination prevention in Europe now? You can have your uh, from your own perspective, your country perspective. It depends of, of you. Uh, please answer uh, for this question. What is your what you're thinking? What it should be? Okay, I see two response included uh, in the national program strategies. Improved access to testing for uh, certain no at risk group. Yeah. Any other comments? Some of the most effective intervention are not rainbows. Yeah, that's right. Collaborative response, demands and advocacy. Increase uh, awareness, increase the access to testing for at risk group, yeah. National HIV AIDS action plan that includes such strategies. Mm -hmm. Peer support, I will give you some more minutes uh, to answer because it's important to see your thoughts. Community deliver of intervention, age prep deliver, yeah. Yeah, inclusive and right uh, based policies. Decriminalization. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, if any of you would uh, funding, yeah, this is the the the, the very basic and uh, the, but the most important thing. If any of you would like to say more or um, explain uh, why you write it and uh, from uh, uh, which perspective you uh, you put it. This is webinar, so that's the reason why I try to, uh, to end up as a part of workshop. So that's the reason I would like to engage you as much as possible. Uh, of course, I'm grateful for all response. Uh, but if any of you would like to comment, please do. I don't see on the on my screen the hands, so you can. Uh, go ahead also just a voice or comment.
I don't see hands uh, either. I'm also monitoring the chat. And I can see if there's questions. Okay, thank you. But uh, everything what you are writing here, it's it's very very important and crucial in the when we are talking on the combination prevention on uh, Europe now around HIV, hepatitis C, and uh, TB, and also as I mentioned uh, before, um, STI. And I think it's also what you one of you implemented here. It's a collaborative response advocacy, uh, peer support group, and still remember about uh, risk group and key population, uh, because uh, the, when we prepare the strategy, we cannot exclude the, the main uh, population for whom we are working with. So thank you for your all response. And this is also what uh, was included on this um, uh, guidelines from uh, WHO, uh, that it's very, very important community empowerment, uh, shaping policy and creative enabling uh, environments, uh, strengthening uh, networks and collective, uh, promoting gender equality, promoting a human rights framework, adapting to local needs and context, developing um, collectives and uh, networks of key population and working with communities of key population and sus sustaining the movement. And from my perspective, like you also, some of you at fundings is also very important and implementing on the uh, national strategy because action is not enough if we... Uh, doing it from not on the strategic strategic uh, level why it's so important because of course key population uh, are more than 50% uh, of newly um, hiv uh, diagnosis people uh, so that's also the reason why uh, on the recommendation we include include uh, packages for uh, dedicate uh, key population and uh, I will not read it uh, all but as you can see on this uh, slide they are quite similar but from other side they are including the specific of the uh, key population so again for the implementation we have the already ready documents uh, but the, when we start to implementing, then we have to remember about um, funding, but also the the different strategy for the different uh, key population. And it's very, very important to not exclude uh, uh, any of uh, them. And this is also very hard uh, in different, different country, especially when it's criminalization uh, of people who are using drugs in uh, many countries or uh, if if there is a homophobic or is there is a criminalization for sex working so so this is what is prepared and as you can see uh, for the there are different uh, idea for the for the, the key population and uh, so this was from people who are using drugs this is for uh, men who have sex with men uh, so it's include again as a combination prevention not only HIV testing, but also other STI, hepatitis. Uh, it was before the situation of MPOX. So now it should be also including MPOX, for example, and MPOX vaccination. And uh, so, so this is also what is essential for broader health. We cannot uh, forget, for example, for mental health. Uh, and uh, so it's it's very comprehensive when we are talking about combination prevention dedicated for the key population. Uh, so now uh, here you have the another uh, group and prisoners. We cannot forget also about this group. So as you can see, uh, the strategy include a different uh, perspective from the different key population. So also in UNA strategy, there are packages uh, for, for different key population. This is for uh, people, uh, for sex workers. Uh, and again, it's include not only testing for HIV, and uh, but also, um, for example, health services, condom and lubricant program, and uh, it should be also a vaccination and so on. This is for men, men who have sex with men and uh, people who are using drugs 
And uh, so even when we have the dedicated program, uh, there is the dedicated guidelines from um, combination prevention, from dedicate uh, key population. Here you have the uh, uh, ECDC guidance about HIV and STI prevention among, among uh, men who have sex with men. I prepared this presentation quite broad because I didn't know who will be participate. So if you are not working, uh, from the um, from the um, uh, if you're working on your community, you can also see that there is a, a lot of different doc documents that can use also when you are doing advocacy work and uh, also when your country try to implement something, there are prepared documents for the implementation. So this is also the ECD document about um, technology strategies and approaches for testing population. And this is also the part of this uh, discussion about medical and non-medical uh, perspective. Uh, also in, in, in Poland, there's a huge discussion right now who should uh, test uh, for, because we need to increase testing in Poland because only 10% of adult people had ever tested in their life for HIV. But uh, we cannot forget that we should work together uh, because uh, it doesn't mean that if you have access for uh, testing for HIV on GPs, we it's eliminate, uh, for example, checkpoints. Of course not. Uh, all possibility of testing uh, on the different uh, settings, it's very, very important. And, uh, and we need also support uh, from medical uh, staff uh, as non-medical uh, peer worker, for example. So uh, here you have the dis different uh, testing um, option and uh, also outcomes and interventions uh, that can be do. Um, and of course, we cannot forget about self-testing uh, because uh, it's also the way of um, and possibility that people can get test. Uh, and again, not on in all country, it's still uh, possible. Um, I would like to also share with you um, a very interesting report. Uh, it was um, presented in 2019, and there is also implementation of the barriers of accessing HIV, hepatitis C, and TB. I saw Ferenc is here, and I think uh, uh, probably he, he could uh, say more about it also. Uh, but this is also the, the way of action that is taken by uh, different um, organization and uh, the documents showing the real situation uh, from the individual country. And from my perspective, it should be the next step. So what the um, stakeholders from the countries will do with this kind of documents, how they want to change it and uh, how it will be evaluated after a few years if it really change. So before we start preparing the new strategy, let's check what was really done in individual country who signed out this strategy. So uh, when we when we talk about uh, see another person for joining us, uh, the the key elements for STI uh, from public uh, perspective, we have to uh, promoting safer sex. Strength, strengthening condoms uh, and promoting healthcare uh, behavior. And you, here you can see all these elements should be uh, implemented on the countries. Okay, so uh, uh, in this part, I would like to exchange of the experience about community healthcare uh, workers and peer uh, worker involvement. But I would like to ask you, are you bored? Now you can, again, for those who join us, uh, please scan the QR code and uh, use this number 8942-8628. Uh, you, you can be uh, fully, it's anonymous, so, uh, uh, and it was a lot of uh, speaking by me, so please answer. <laughs> This is also for interactive for you. <laughs> okay. 
I'm happy that you are not so bored, but I think we are just after uh, one hour. So uh, if it's okay for you, let's do 10 minutes break uh, to take a coffee and come back in 10 minutes. So uh, it will be yeah, more or less uh, 3 p.m. Uh, come on, uh, please join us again. Uh, now it will be a short break. Our experience and uh, also um, cooperation and how combination prevention can be uh, done by organization and uh, uh, good and uh, I, I hope it will be a, a good practice and also um, uh, it will be interesting also for you. Just very short, uh, do you see the my presentation? Yes. Yeah, great. So, uh, this is what I also mentioned in the beginning about differences between uh, West, Central and East Europe. And uh, this data uh, came before the 2022, so it's 2018. And uh, probably also the situation right now with uh, migrants from Eastern Europe and Central Asia will also have impact. Why? Because as you see, the, 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 the reported transmission in the West Europe it was mainly more than uh, uh, 50% are uh, sex between men. And on the uh, east side, as you can see, it's only 5%. Of course, probably it will be more because it's also the, the situation of the country, cultural, homophobic, and so on. Uh, but still, uh, we have much more women living with HIV on eastern country. And uh, after the, the situation and uh, the war, what is going on in Ukraine, uh, so many migrants are um, moved right now for Central and West Europe that we have to work uh, and face of the situation. And also we should work around uh, combination prevention, dedicate what was mentioned before about for, for migrants and migrants needs, because it's not only about disease but it's also about mental health and uh, the, the situation uh, in the life after uh, when you are coming from the country from war. Uh, from my perspective now, I will be more much more sp speaking as a uh, for show you the one of the practice of, uh, in Europe as a uh, Poland. As you can see, Poland and uh, Ukraine has the highest number of promotion of people who are undiagnosed. And we also right now see uh, not only people who are coming for treatment uh, from Ukraine to Poland, but also uh, especially women dying for AIDS, even though in Poland uh, we have access for treatment and everybody who needs treatment had treatment for HIV. But if you are undiagnosed, we cannot help you. So this is also the new situation for us, how to dedicate our program for the uh, our population that uh, is coming also from the, especially from migrants. But you have to also know that Poland uh, are not so good on the combination prevention as other country and don't spend as a governmental level as much funding for the combination prevention that it should be. So this is very short uh, information that what I mentioned before, 10% of adult people uh, had ever tested in their life in Poland. 87% Polish people think that HIV is not their problem. As I mentioned, antiretroviral therapy is free for all, but you need to have insurance to go to the doctor. And for many years, it wasn't a problem because it was refunding. But right now, when we have 20% more patient in our HIV clinic, it started to be a, a problem. And also, Ministry of Health do not want to pay for the visit uh, to take the uh, treatment. Uh, it's not uh, around uh, Ukrainian migrants because they have exactly the same rights like Polish people. But we have to remember that uh, Poland uh, has a huge humanitarian crisis on the Belarusian board. And we have also migrants from Syria, Kyrgyzstan, Kaz uh, Azerbaijan and other European and uh, um, uh, uh, Eastern Europe and Central Asia country. And we have also... Uh, and many migrants right now also from Africa uh, because of the uh, huge scandal around visas uh, in the last few 
years. So this is also what uh, put my uh, eyes on. Uh, 90% died after six months after diagnosis. And it's not those people not dying because uh, of diagnosis of HIV, but it's just because it's too late. There are uh, uh, almost half uh, people who are diagnosed in Poland are diagnosed late on the AIDS stage. So this is what you see and also what uh, uh, Polish organizations see that we have in, we have to very quickly implement combination prevention programs to stop the situation around HIV because it's going up. And that's everybody knows uh, 2022 changed the situation, uh, not only for Poland, but also for different uh, countries, especially and dedicate uh, the, the, the biggest uh, uh, changes uh, happen in Ukraine. So uh, we see also a huge impact of the situation in Ukraine. And I will also share with you our experience, how we face on it, the situation, because uh, like all Europe, we were not prepared uh, for that situation. As I mentioned, my foundation is around, we right now 22 years old, so we are quite long um, a working organization, but very dynamic and with new uh, new people and uh, um, and working in the dif different topic. Uh, around HIV, we have two VCT centers. So we have voluntary counseling and testing in Warsaw. We are testing for HIV, hepatitis C and syphilis. In our center, and this is also, I will be mentioned it several times, it's a collab collaboration between peer workers uh, and uh, medical staff, because in our team, we have doctor, nurses, but we also have people from the key population. We work with people uh, who are using drugs. We work, work with uh, sex work um, and uh, several, and we, we hear what they need and we try to dedicate program uh, uh, for them. We have mobile harm reduction service, and this is another part of the cooperation because Magda Bartnik, who is also sitting here today, uh, on uh, this uh, workshop, uh, she's a CEO from the Foundation Procursor who take with us this uh, mobile harm reduction service dedicated for uh, uh, people who are using drugs. I will say more about this uh, later. We have Academy of Positive Life for people uh, living with HIV where we where they can get support and uh, help by lawyer, um, psychotherapist, and uh, social worker. We are doing research, advocacy work and social campaigns and one the newest campaign I will show you in the end. So this is also what I, what I said in the theory about combination prevention. We try to implement combination prevention as much as possible. Mainly we dedicate our work for HIV and STI, but uh, of course we implement also hepatitis. Uh, and right now we implement in our project a pro uh, also TB because uh, in Poland there is none there's any organ there's no organization dedicated for TB. We have a huge support from uh uh uh, organ with WHO and uh, and also uh, the European organization, uh, but we need also a bigger impact inside around TB mainly. So as I mentioned, we work around uh, different key population and we also have dedicated pro uh, program for harm reduction. And now I would like to show you uh, my teamwork. I hope it works. They will explain you how we work uh, uh, in the around uh, harm reduction in Poland, in Warsaw, in cooperation with other NGOs. Yes, we cannot hear it, but it has subtitles. But it's yeah, because it's in Polish, uh, in Polish, so you don't have to hear it because it's in okay. with subtitles.
tak związanych z zagrożeniem zdrowia, życia czy śmierci, to bardzo pozwala tym osobom się otworzyć. Wielokrotnie zaczynają też mówić o różnych swoich trudnych doświadczeniach, a dzięki temu, że nasza fundacja dysponuje też zapleczem takiego wsparcia psychologicznego, no to możemy bezpośrednio te osoby skierować po takie wsparcie, jeżeli by tego potrzebowały. Oprócz tego też to ułatwia zdecydowanie zadawanie różnych pytań wprost, weryfikowanie różnych rzeczy, które na przykład przeczytało się w internecie, co w całości te wszystkie działania prowadzą do tego, że możemy realizować bardzo rzetelną edukację opartą tylko i wyłącznie na badaniach naukowych i sprawdzonych informacjach bez całego aspektu takiego moralizowania, straszenia czy oceniania. Cześć, nazywam się Natalia Juszczak, jestem koordynatorem projektu After Party w Fundacji Edukacji Społecznej. Założeniem programu After Party jest docieranie do jak największej liczby osób, które borykają się albo z problemem uzależnienia, albo w sposób szkodliwy używają substancji. Pracujemy w nurcie redukcji szkód, czyli jesteśmy otwarci, nie oceniamy osób, które się do nas zgłaszają. Naszym głównym celem jest przede wszystkim poprawa jakości życia osób, które się do nas zgłaszają. Oprócz tego, że docieramy do młodych osób, które y, używają substancji, staramy się również docierać do ich rodzin. Prowadzimy grupy wsparcia właśnie dla osób bliskich, gdzie w rodzinie są problemy z substancjami. Oprócz tego, że prowadzimy właśnie konsultacje psychologiczne, mamy również konsultacje prawne dla osób, które w związku z używaniem substancji mają jakieś problemy. Dodatkowo staramy się wychodzić również do ludzi, także prowadzimy różnego rodzaju działania terenowe, street workingi, zarówno w klubach, jak również jeździmy na różne festiwale. Prowadzimy również terenowe działania nad Wisłą. Naszym głównym założeniem jest edukacja i profilaktyka, dlatego oprócz tych działań terenowych staramy się również edukować młode osoby w szkołach, żeby zwiększać ich wiedzę na temat substancji psychoaktywnych, ale przede wszystkim tego, żeby byli odpowiedzialni za swoje zachowanie. W projekcie After Party mamy bardzo dużo wolontariuszy, którzy razem z naszymi specjalistami starają się właśnie edukować młodych ludzi, dlatego spotykamy się również z bardzo pozytywnym odbiorem biorem zarówno od osób starszych, jak i osób od młodych, że działania, które podejmujemy są bardzo dla nich korzystne i są dla nich po prostu super dawką wiedzy w warunkach, w których czują się bezpiecznie. Cześć, nazywam się Rafał, jestem lekarzem w trakcie specjalizacji z psychiatrii i doradcą do spraw HIV AIDS. W ramach projektu realizowanego przez Fundację Edukacji Społecznej od wielu lat testujemy anonimowo i bezpłatnie na HIV i inne choroby przenoszone drogą płciową. Tak słowem wstępu, czemu to jest ważne? W Polsce problem HIV cały czas jest aktualny, cały czas bardzo mało osób się testuje, jest wokół tego dużo strachu, dużo stygmatyzacji. Jedynie około 10% Polaków kiedykolwiek wykonało test na HIV, co jest bardzo mało, zwłaszcza jeżeli weźmiemy pod uwagę to, że mamy skuteczne leczenie i umiemy sobie z tą chorobą poradzić. Tak jak powiedziałem, Fundacja prowadzi testowanie już od wielu lat, natomiast od niedawna jako pierwsi w Polsce Postanowiliśmy wyjść z punktów anonimowego testowania do ludzi. Poszliśmy do klubu, zaczęliśmy testowanie w klubach LGBT w Warszawie. Spotkało się to z bardzo dużym zainteresowaniem. W ciągu pierwszej imprezy e, musieliśmy skończyć wcześniej ze względu na to, że po prostu skończyły nam się testy na HIV. Dlatego skąd taki pomysł, żeby wychodzić? E, stwierdziliśmy, że ponieważ wokół testu jest cały czas dużo strachu, dużo lęku, Część ludzi nigdy na ten test po prostu nie przyjdzie. I zamiast czekać, aż oni przyjdą do nas do punktu, postanowiliśmy wyjść do nich, do miejsc, w których te osoby czują się bezpiecznie. I tym sposobem stworzyliśmy duży zespół, który zawsze składa się z doradcy do spraw hit fates, który odpowiada na wszystkie pytania, psychologa, który będzie oferował wsparcie w razie w wyniku niespodziewanego dodatniego, pracownika medycznego, który ten test wykonuje. 
przygotowanie takiego testowania na imprezie też wymaga tak naprawdę dużo pracy. Trzeba stworzyć bezpieczną przestrzeń, w której ta anonimowość będzie zachowana. Trzeba stworzyć taki system, w którym będziemy też kontrolować, czy osoba, która przychodzi na test nie jest pod wpływem substancji alkoholu, który uniemożliwi jej odebranie pozytywnego wyniku. Wiele ludzi chętnie korzysta z naszych usług. Testujemy nie tylko w klubach. Od, od niedawna zaczęliśmy również testowanie osób nad Wisłą. Zaczęliśmy testowanie na różnych festiwalach warszawskich i tym sposobem udało nam się przetestować osoby, które nigdy wcześniej tego testu nie wykonały. Pokazaliśmy im też, że to nie jest nic strasznego, że testowanie jest czymś normalnym, że można to zrobić nawet na imprezie i nie trzeba się tego bać. I to jest najważniejsza misja, z którą wychodzimy. Też my jako osoby młode nie wzbudzamy takiego strachu, lęku, że nie idzie się do pana doktora, tylko możemy normalnie na imprezie z naszymi rówieśnikami pogadać o zdrowiu seksualnym, o edukacji seksualnej, o bezpiecznym seksie i o tym, dlaczego tak ważne jest testowanie na HIV. Dlatego zachęcamy do testowania. Cześć, jestem Mikołaj i w Fundacji działam już kilka lat. Ważna jest dla nas idea inkluzywności, dlatego szczególną wagę przykładamy do pomocy osobom ze środowiska LGBT+. Zajmujemy się edukacją odnośnie dyskryminacji, a także posiadamy informacje odnośnie tego, gdzie dane osoby mogą uzyskać pomoc w związku z problemami, które są dla nich szczególnie istotne. Co roku znajdujemy się także na Paradzie Równości, czy to za pomocą stoiska w miasteczku równości, czy też uczestnicząc w pochodzie, wspieramy osoby LGBT+, w walce o swoje prawa. Organizujemy także akcję TransSwap, czyli jest to przestrzeń, w której część osób oddaje swoje ubranie i kosmetyki, dzięki czemu osoby niebinarne i transpłciowe mogą wypróbować różne rzeczy, i wypróbować różne style, sprawdzić w czym się czują najlepiej i dzięki temu dowiedzieć się, w jaki sposób najlepiej odbywa się ich ekspresja płciowa. W naszej organizacji znajduje się też wiele osób ze społeczności LGBT+, dlatego jeżeli ktokolwiek potrzebuje porozmawiać, bądź zdobyć jakieś informacje, dowiedzieć się czegoś, albo potrzebuje pomocy związanej ze swoją orientacją seksualną, czy też ekspresją płciową, spokojnie może podejść i z nami porozmawiać. Jesteśmy otwarci i tolerancyjni. So this was the um, example how uh, organization can work. As you see, uh, there are young people and peer uh, to peer work is doing by a uh, dedicated person who has a very good cooperation and contact with uh, young people. Uh, so this is what we are still doing uh, in uh, Warsaw River. Uh, this is what I uh, mentioned about mobile harm reduction service. Uh, so it's a dedicated program for people who are using drugs, uh, but we also do going for the different place uh, for uh, people, uh, young people also who are using drugs. And this is with cooperation with Precursor, with other organization, when the um, uh, outreach workers are from the community and understand exactly uh, how to talk and how to uh, involve uh, our um, clients for cooperation also. So uh, this is also where we are working in, uh, not only in Warsaw, but we also traveling, but it's dedicated mainly in uh, Warsaw. And this mobile harm reduction service uh, was also the answer for the need because in the last, uh, Three years, we saw the increasing number of uh, migrants, especially from Belarus, Chechnya, um, um, Azerbaijan, Ukraine, of course, uh, too. And uh, this year, we implement also a TB uh, prevention program, and we will be uh, screening uh, by questionnaire and uh, trying to educate also about uh, TB our uh, clients. Uh, so this is our next step because of the situation and reality where we are living right now. Uh, we also promote testing. It will be quite fast uh, to, to finish this part of the presentation, but uh, we have the 
sending tests to the influencers and invite them to promote testing uh, on their channel. It's uh, they are doing is free of charge, uh, and uh, this is also the way how we use uh, famous people on social media uh, to promote uh, testing. Uh, this is the impact on the social media. It's uh, huge uh, and it's very interesting uh, when the um, influence her bigger impact than experts speaking in, for example, TV. So this is this year was dedicated for the uh, women and it was around European Testing Week. And um, as you can see, we are also sending the self-test uh, kit. And as you can see in the moment when it's European Testing Week, it's May, uh, the number is going very quickly up. And it's uh, the, also you can see impact in um, December when the number goes up. So it works um, that it's amazing. And the, the last part, what, what I would like to share with you, as I mentioned also, um, we see the situation of the um, migrants in Poland. So uh, I was dreaming about uh, to prepare a campaign uh, dedicated for people living with HIV with voice with and faces with people living with HIV. And this year we made it. We have support with WHO, but we also invite Anna and uh, Tatiana. Tatiana, uh, she's a migrant from Belarus and Anna is a migrant from Ukraine uh, to uh, talk more about living with HIV in Poland uh, in a very positive way and also to engage people uh, for testing and don't be afraid, even though when it's a uh, reactive test. And this campaign was shown in the uh, Warsaw Underground and uh, finally also in the Polish TV, public one. And uh, we have also mural uh, on the, uh, the, uh, the painting on the uh, in Warsaw and support also from different organization. So, um, so it's great. And uh, I would like to also show you our campaign. Uh, if you, did you heard the voice on, uh, in the last uh, movie, it's all only the subtitles. Parents, because no, I could I, hear it correctly. It was only the, um, uh, only the voice, yeah? Uh, only the subtitles. In the second half, we could hear the okay. voice so, as well. Because I, I take off the headphones and, and then I think I'll, it's important because the music is important also on the campaign. So I would like to show you our campaign. Boję się wojny, boję się kataklizmów. Ile mi zostało? Kochana, gierza tej. It should here must be the subtitles. Oh, sorry, again, not the subtitles that I should be. Boję się wojny, boję się kataklizmów. Ile mi zostało? Kochana, gierza ze innych. Chyba ze stabilna życia, jestem dumna. Lęk. Marzę o długim życiu. Nie mam wewnętrznej z tego. Idę do przodu. Nie żałuję. Ja sobie kalendarz ścienny. Pierwszy raz w swoim życiu. Skreślałem dzień po dniu. Moim największym marzeniem jest zwiedzić Bieszczady z Kulwiecu Końskiego. 
Jestem Magdalena. Witam. Tatiana. Anna. Tomasz. Jestem Grzesiek. I żyję z HIV. Bicz. I żyję z HIV. Żyję z HIV od 25 lat. Powiedziałem chirurgowi takiemu starej daty, że żyje z HIV. A on zrobił tak. No to ja bym tak chciał, żeby tak ludzie reagowali. Nie wiem, czy miałbym życie takiej jakości, jak mam teraz, gdybym nie mierzył się z różnymi problemami, gdybym nie odebrał tej diagnozy te 6 lat. 2008 roku znaję pro swój status i to mnie nadychaje robić te klasne rzeczy. Mają my takie samo poczucia, takie samo wrażenia, takie samo życie. Back home I saw a little bit more. Let's call it rain. Moim największym osiągnięciem jest urodzenie dwójki z drogich dzieci. Jedyne, co muszę robić, zapewnić mi zdrowie i długie życie, to jest przyjmowanie leków. I na tym polega normalne życie. A, żeby wszyscy znali, że lepiej obsługiwać się na wieś raniej, i wtedy życie będzie długie, szczęśliwe. Bez jakichkolwiek problem. Naprawdę myślałam, że to jest koniec świata. So this is our new campaign. We are proud of it because it's also answer for the need uh, that we have. I will go through to the... Uh, okay, I hope you, you, you saw it because uh, I see some information in the chat. And... Uh, yeah, it last... was visible. Yeah, thanks. And uh, coming to the end, I hope you don't forget about your phones because we come back for the phones. Yes. Okay, so just to end of the all this topic that we talk and also to remember and finish of the, also what one of the member of this uh, workshop uh, mentioned, we cannot forget about migrants and social, uh, the, the different social determinants of health. And um, also we have to remember about the migration. And now uh, in the, the last part, uh, there is a Q&A. So now you can have a possibility to ask whatever you want, comments or uh, 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 ask or, or comments uh, what you would like around this uh, workshop that we have today.